right uh, I think that we are live can you guys hear me yes can you guys hear me well I think okay um, so we are gonna get started um, so today I'm gonna show you how to create an ERS20 token on the base blockchain. Uh, base is super popular right now, so the demand for a token on base is going to explode. So no matter if you want to create your own token or you want to create a token for someone else, um, you're gonna have a lot of demand. So uh, for those who are new here, I'm Julian uh, and. I've been a blockchain developer since many years. I use this technology uh, on a day to day basis. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get into it. So I see some activity in the chat. Uh, Tong, Nepali, Ragu, Giovanni, Dr. Remix, Josh, Siraya. Um, hope you're feeling better. Uh, thanks, but I'm not, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, still a little bit sick, but that's okay. That's okay because we have something important to talk about today. Um, so, uh, before before we get started, uh, very quickly, uh, let me remind you that we have our Solidity Bootcamp that is starting very soon. So, the registration for the bootcamp is going to end uh, tomorrow. So, you have less than 24 hours to register. So if you are interested to become a Solidity Pro and be job ready, uh, check out the bootcamp in one month, we can turn you into a pro. Um, all right, so let's move on to our topic today. So deploying a token on base. So first of all, what is base? So base is a blockchain, blockchain that is connected to Ethereum. and. Currently, there is a massive momentum on base. Um, so here you can see the total value locked on, for different blockchain. And base here in purple is skyrocketing. Uh, this is absolutely insane. Uh, why is this? Well, I already talked about this this week, but the TLDR is that it belongs to Coinbase and, and Coinbase has the full stack, basically. They, they have the exchange, they have, they have the wallet, they have the blockchain. So they're really well positioned to have a lot of people. Uh, on the blockchain. So technically, base is what we call a L2. So a L2 is a secondary blockchain uh, that is connected to Ethereum. And so all of this is like technical name, but what's important to understand is that you benefit from the secu security of Ethereum, but uh, at a much uh, cheaper, uh, cheaper cost because the transaction fee on base are much cheaper than Ethereum. So that is the big reason why uh, a lot of people are flocking to, to base. Um, so under the hood, base uses the same technology as Ethereum, okay? So that means if you know how to create tokens on, on Ethereum, you can also do it on base. And that's awesome because you don't need to relearn a lot of different tech. This is super, super interesting. Um, so now uh, let's get into the technical details. Okay, so. Uh, a token is technically what we call a smart contract. And a smart contract uh, is basically a small program on the blockchain. Um, so, you know, just the name smart contract isn't really a great name because it's smart contract, it's not really smart, it's not really a contract, it's just a program. And there are different programming language, but the one that you need to focus on is called Solidity. So here uh, you can see some Solidity code. This is the, the documentation of Solidity. Um, and so if you are used to uh, JavaScript, um, it looks a little bit similar, but it's actually it's actually quite, quite different. Um, so we are going to use this programming language Solidity to create our token on base. Uh, but the next question is, what is a token? Um, good question. So here you can see on common market cap the top crypto uh, and some of these crypto are actually token like tether this is a token um, 
what else usdc uh technically this is a token and many of these assets here are actually token and that token this is implemented as a smart contract and this smart contract has to follow a, a certain standard that is called erc20 and so you can find the documentation um publicly here um and so it has to implement a couple of functions uh, here for your smart contract to be correct. But uh, this only define the, what we call the function signature. So basically the interface, it's like, it's like a high level of specification, but it doesn't uh, give you all the details. It's up to you to code your ERC20 token like you want, as long as you respect some rules, if you want, that are... Um, that, that are described by this document and so everybody can code their own ERC20 but it's actually quite dangerous to do this because it's very easy to make a mistake and you know on blockchain when you make a mistake it can be a disaster because hackers can come in there's a security hole they're gonna drain all your contract they're gonna steal all the coin uh, they're going to do a rug pull, all sort of nasty stuff. So you don't want this to happen. And every time you code some uh, solidity, you want to make sure it's safe. So that's why some people created what we call a library. So it's basically like a toolkit if you want. Um, and so oh, you can also see this as a, some ready to use code. So this is a solidity library, open zippling that you can use to implement ERC20 tokens. They have other functionality, but most people mainly use OpenZeppling for creating ERC20 token. Um, all right, so now you understand the high level uh, of what is a, a, a spot contract, what is Solidity, so now we're gonna do the coding. All right, so for that, uh, we're gonna use a website that is called Remix. Um, uh, it's called Remix. That's basically a tool to code Solidity. This is technically, this is what we call an IDE. If you're not a developer, you can forget about this. This is basically just a tool, okay? And what's great is that you can load Remix directly in your web browser. Uh, you can find the address here, remix.ethereum.org. I'm gonna put this uh, in the chat. And yeah, so with Remix, you have nothing to install. It's super easy. Um, and so to create your first smart contract, you go here in this menu, the file explorer. Um, you go, we're gonna click on create new file and we're gonna call our smart contract token. And the extension for Solidity is dot .sol, uh, S-O-L, all right? And so after here, you're gonna code your smart contract. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I think it's a little bit small. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it should be, should be enough like this. Okay. Um, so are we going to code this by hand? Uh, we could do it, uh, but I already explained we're going to use open zippling. And, and even if we want to use open zippling, we can actually go even faster and we're going to use chat GPT uh, to ask us to create the code for us. So code a um, code an ERC20 uh, token uh, with solidity and open zippling. All right, so let's see what it's gonna do. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I don't care, I don't care. Just give us the code. Uh, so you have to be careful with uh, ChatGPT because sometimes it gives you some outdated stuff. For example, here you say, yeah, create a new Truffle project. So Truffle is an outdated framework for smart contract. You shouldn't use it anymore. Um, and here there is the interesting part, the code. So we're going to copy this. We're going to remix. Okay, we're going to paste this. And here we have our code. So we're going to decipher this line by line. Okay, so... First, this is what we call a comment uh, with two slash at the beginning. You can just ignore that. Now, this is the pragma statement. So you identify the version of Solidity. Um, so here we want version 0 0.8.0. Usually you want the latest version. So right now, 
think we are at 0 0.8.25. Uh, let's check this here. Yeah, 8.25, correct. After we're gonna import the library that we're gonna use. So it's called open zeppelin. And why we have this slash contracts token, etc., is because this is the structure of open zeppelin. So you have different subfolder in open zeppelin. Um, and one of them is called yas20 and inside there is this solidity file called yas20 and so we want to grab it um and actually if you want to read what is in this file here yas20 you have to see you have to go to the website of open zeppelin so what we can do is open zeppelin github um and open zippling contract so we go to this so if you're not a coder uh, this is github and this is where we put the code uh where where we put the where coder upload their code okay um and so now we're gonna go into contracts directory we're gonna go in token uh we're gonna go in erc20 erc20 here okay so here you can see some solidity code um so don't worry, we're not, we don't have to understand everything, but I just want to show you a couple of stuff. Um, so here, for example, this is how we track the balances of different user. Um, let's keep going here. You have the name and the symbol of the token. And here there are some function that uh, we already found in the specification, like name, uh, symbol. Um, so here, if we go in the specification, you can see those function name, symbol so there is just what we call the function signature here there is no definition so that means this part has to be exactly the same uh, but what is inside the function that is up to you so here we can see that the function signature matches the specification of erc20 all right so uh we're gonna get back to uh to remix so here we import this library Okay, and after in this part, this is where we define our smart contract. So we use this contract keyword. Uh, we name our contract and we're going to inherit. So inherit means that I'm going to take this as a base. This is going to be my my base. Okay, um, so it's like if you if you make a pizza, okay, and then you're going to have the base of the pizza and then you put all the, the other ingredients. Um, uh, cheese uh what else what, what else can you put in a, in a pizza uh, macaroni i don't know ananas uh, <laughs> uh, uh pineapple sorry i'm speaking french now <laughs> uh pineapple i know some italian will be really angry if you tell them you put a uh, uh, pineapple on, on on the pizza but anyway so this is the base of the pizza okay and so with this we already have a lot of functionality um and that means most of our code is already ready so the only thing we need to do is to configure the contract. And so how we do this with this constructor. So this is a special function that is called only one time. It's when we first deploy the contract, uh, this function is going to be called. And so we pass what is what we call the initial supply. So that's the number of coin that's going to be uh, minted uh, that, um, that our, um, our token will have. So we can decide whatever we want. 1,000, 1 million, 1 billion. And we also going to pass some other argument here. So the name of the token, my token, and then the symbol of the token. So this is what we will see on coin market cap, for example, uh, on the different exchange, we will see this ticker. This is like small abbreviation to easily identify the token. Um, and after we are going to call one of the function of ERC20 mint. So actually mint is defined in ERC20 of Open Zeppelin, okay? So even though we didn't define this function, we can still call it. And we for we pass it to argument, the address of the sender, so the address that deploy this contract, and the initial uh, supply. So that means the person who, de who uh, deployed the contract, usually that's gonna be the developer. This person's gonna get all the initial supply, and then it's up to the developer to distribute this token. So. There are many mechanisms to distribute tokens, uh, ICO, etc. This is a simplified version, okay? Just for this example, we're gonna 
keep it simple. But in reality, it can be a little bit more complex than this. Um, okay, so here we have a really, really basic contract in, uh, and next we want to deploy it. So to deploy it, we will need what we call a wallet, okay? So in the wallet we are going to use is called MetaMask. So a wallet is basically, you can see it as your password manager, okay? Inside your wallet, you have a secret that we call a private key. And with this, this is how you can interact with the blockchain and how you can send transaction. And when we deploy a smart contract, this is a special kind of transaction. <coughs> So we're going to install MetaMask. Uh, this is technically, this is a Chrome extension. So you go to the Chrome web store uh, and you search MetaMask and you install it. I uh, just have to click on it. And after you can see a little fox here um, in your extensions um, here. So you see this fox with different account, account one, uh, account two, etc. So by default, it's going to create the first account and you're not going to have any money in it. So it's up to you to send money to uh, this account and you can create uh, as much as many a new account that you want. And so you can see that each of these account is identified by uh, a weird number here. So zero X uh, something. Uh, okay, let's go back to to remix. So here, yeah. So here, this number zero x six f etc. So that is the address. That's basically like your bank account number. Okay, and so we are going to deploy the smart contract from this address, from this bank account number. Uh, so we, uh, yeah. So here we were in uh, in in remix. And we need to, so there are different network uh, in, uh, sorry, uh, MetaMask. There are different network in MetaMask. You have Ethereum, Mainnet, a couple of other ones. And we are going to deploy it uh, on base testnet. So before you deploy on the base, on the real base network that we call Mainnet, you need to deploy it first on another kind of network that we call testnet. So it's also a public network, meaning that there are several computers that are connected, but it's not the real one. And this is used by developer who want to try out new things before you deploy to production in uh, even in web two, you also do this. You also, you always do a sort of test deployment where you test, you make sure that everything is working fine and then you do the real deployment. So here our test, Deployment will be on base testnet and if anything breaks it doesn't matter because it's not the real network and we won't lose any money on it But because by default this network is not in MetaMask what you need to do is to click on add network All right, and here so they have some predefined network already, but base testnet is not in them So you click on add network manually. Uh, this is at the bottom um and in here you're gonna have to fill the different uh, different parameters. So here, uh, base testnet, uh, then uh, new RPC URL. So let me see, I have it somewhere. Yeah. So in the documentation of base, you can find all of this info. So for the URL, we're gonna select this. It's called RPC endpoint. Uh, okay, where is it? Uh, I think it's here. New RPC endpoint, uh, chain ID. Uh, so that's this one. Uh, then currency symbol, it's ETH. And block explorer, uh, it's gonna be, uh, let me see, where did I put it? Yeah, this one, base sepolia dot block uh, scout. So block explorer, that is basically it's the equivalent of a web browser, but for the blockchain. Okay, so you can. This is a tool that you can use to uh, inspect the blockchain and find transactions. Um, all right, and so after you click on save, so me already uh, added added it, so I can't I can't click on save. But uh, here I'm gonna cancel, and after once you do this, and 
you click on your MetaMask, you will see the base testnet, okay? So that means you, you've added it, the network properly. Um, all right, so once we did this, uh, next step is to get what uh, what we call some testnet ether. So when you're going to deploy the contract, you're gonna pay some money. Uh, you need to pay the miners. and this might but it's not going to be real money because we are on testnet so uh this sort of fake money uh, this is what we call testnet ether um and you cannot buy it the only way to get it is to use what we call a faucet so this is a special kind of website that is provided uh by some some important actor uh, in the community like here we have the faucet of quick notes so quick note that is a an api for blockchain developers so it's basically they provide a service to let you uh, access the blockchain more easily um, and they also provide some stuff for free like here the faucet so you go uh, you go to the faucet of Sepolia so I'm gonna put this uh, in the chat uh, and and after what you're gonna do so you're gonna connect uh, you're gonna connect the wallet okay you're gonna click here and here connect MetaMask uh, and after, so you select base Sepolia, you're gonna put your address here. So let me see where I put my address. Um, so here you select the correct account, copy to clipboard, you go there, you click on continue. Um, and there is a little caveat, okay? So super annoying, but they do this to prevent spamming. So if you just do this, it's not gonna work first. You need to have some money on um, on Ethereum mainnet, okay? And exactly, those, uh, you can see it here, 0 0.0001 ETH. Uh, okay, it's almost not visible, so let's go in Remix. Uh, yeah, you need this amount on mainnet. Um, so you buy some Ether and you transfer this amount on this address. Uh, you won't need to spend this amount, but you will need to have it on mainnet. And after that, um, you click on continue and you're going to see this screen and it's going to show you a transaction hash. A transaction hash is basically uh, an identifier for your transaction. This is a, a special number that uh, a special string of character that start with zero X and you can identify a transaction. And so to identify a transaction, you will go on what we call a blockchain explorer. So I explained this before, that's a basically like a web browser, but for the blockchain. Um, and you're gonna put the transaction hash uh, here. So, okay, let me just, uh, or if you can click here directly, it will take you actually to the, the correct place. Uh, and here is the transaction detail. All right, with the transaction hash, success means it, it worked. Uh, from their address to our address, 0x6 something. And they sent us 0 0.05 ETH. So that is not real ETH, okay? Uh, you didn't find <laughs> a magical, you didn't find a loophole in the system, okay? I can see some guy in the chat say, wow, so crazy, we can get some free ETH. No, 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 that's testnet, all right? Um, but it will still be useful to do our test deployment. Um, so what we're gonna do once we have this is that we going to do our, um, our deployment. So we are going in Remix, okay? Um, then we're gonna go in the tab Deploy and Run Transaction. So first we're gonna do a test deployment locally. Um, with Remix it's possible to deploy your contract on a so-called local blockchain. So that's a blockchain that is just in your web browser. Uh, so it's only for testing, even before testnet is one level uh, before testnet. So you don't even need any, te uh, <coughs> sorry, you don't even need any testnet ether here because this is a sort of uh, imaginary blockchain. We can do wh whatever we want. And so Remix is going to create some magical money so here, for example, Remix has an account called 0x5b something, and we have almost 100 Ether in it. Uh, again, this is not real Ether. So 
we're gonna deploy our contract so we need some input because in a constructor we have this initial supply argument so let's just put 1000 here okay um and uh by the way uh 1000 uh so that you know it's not it's not what you think okay because the um we we have a system of um of, of decimals in a smart contract so in tokens so basically when you want to transfer one token you don't actually transfer one token but you tr you have to transfer for example one time 10 power 18. so here for the supply it will probably be a huge number uh, something like this with many zero and you can calculate this yourself but here let's just keep it simple and we're just gonna put 1000 all right so we click on deploy and we can see that something is happening here so that's a transaction there's a green check mark means it was successful and here if you click here you can extend expand that part and <laughs> you can see a few buttons um and so those buttons allow you to interact with your deploy smart contract so here you can see that our smart contract uh, which is our token basically has an address so you can copy it here um so this is smart contract address and we can interact with it we can call decimal so 18 that's normal because open zeppelin give uh give you 18 uh, decimals name uh it's called my token this is what we define uh symbol mtk and total supply 1000 this is what we input it so everything is normal all right so once you've done this uh so we're gonna clear this the next step is to do the actual deployment to testnet. So now you're gonna go in environment, you're gonna click on injected provider, um, and it's gonna connect to MetaMask. So here, we're gonna select the account that we wanna connect to, so account two, where we have our testnet ether. We click on next, all right, it's uh, connecting. Um, and after that, um, we are going to do the deployment again so 1000 we click on deploy and uh okay so 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 <laughs> yeah let's try to send this a gas estimation fail i don't know why that's the case uh but let's try anyway so confirm transaction uh about to create a transaction on main network so here i think um remix give you a wrong info it's not on main network it's on testnet but anyway uh let's click on confirm and so we'll see the pop-up from metamask okay uh so it's going to ask us uh ta -ta -ta. so let me see what's the problem here Okay, so the problem is that even on, on the, the testnet of base, uh, even the testnet is, su oh, why is it trying to do it on Ethereum mainnet? Okay, okay, I think I think there is an issue, guys. Uh, no, 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 so let's reject this. Let's go back, and we didn't select the proper network. Okay, typical noob mistake. Oh, I'm, I'm ashamed. Typical noob mistake. Okay, so step one. You select the proper network, okay, base testnet. Then step two, make sure you select the correct address. Okay, that's the that's the case here. Uh, all right, so let's try again now. Deploy. Uh, so now, okay, now it seems it makes more sense. So we can see here that it's gonna do this on base testnet. Estimation fee five dollar, but that's not true because that's um, that's like a, just a theoretical price, but we're not really gonna pay that because that's testnet ether. Um, and in terms of ether, so max fee will be 0 0.001 and that's okay because we have um, 0 0.05, so we have enough. So we're gonna click on confirm. Uh, all right, let's go. And now you can see that below it's going to say creation of my token pending. So it's going to take a bit more time compared to when you do it locally. And, and that's very normal. But that's because uh, when you do it locally, 
there is no need to wait for another computer um, on the network. Uh, but in this case, we are interacting with the network. So it's going to take some time before a transaction is mine, uh, at least a couple of seconds. And so here we see that the transaction was mined. Uh, so that's great. And so we can click here to see more detail. Uh, okay, so let me expand this. Uh, let's expand this. Okay, so here we will see a transaction hash. Let's click here. Um, and now we are going on the uh, explorer of uh, base testnet. Okay, so base uh, hyphen sepolia dot block scan dot com. Um, they're going to put our transaction hash and it find it. And that is the proof that the transaction actually happened. Okay, so Remix didn't just tell you some bullshit uh, here. You can see in the blockchain explorer, we can see this transaction and it was successful. Um, and here it created my token, contract my token. Okay, so let's click on it. Token name, my token, uh, yeah, is uh, very, very good. So if you click on contract, unfortunately, what you see is unreadable. Um, here, what we call the deployed bytecode. So that's this represent the code of your contract. That's because on the blockchain, uh, we don't actually the blockchain doesn't uh, the base the base blockchain and Ethereum. That's the same. They do not know what is solidity because solidity is compiled to a uh, <coughs> a low level uh, a low level code that we call bytecode, and it's basically some 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 figures here uh, it's not very uh, human friendly uh, but the blockchain can understand that but if we verify our contract that means if we provide the solidity code to the blockchain explorer here you can see there is a button called verify and publish if you do this operation after you will be able to read the actual code the actual solidity code here and that is very important because uh, users, they want to see this user before they buy your token, they will go to see on a website like this, if your token is real or if it has any sort of loophole. So nobody is going to buy your token if you didn't verify it. Um, so we're not going to do this step, but in a real deployment, you will have to do it again. Uh, I mean, you'll have to do that. <coughs> All right. Um, so yeah, everything worked fine. And so there is a last step. We're not going to do it here, but I'm going to explain it to you. So what, what about if you want to deploy to base mainnet, the, the real network? So the steps are almost exactly the same. The only difference is that you will need to have some real money um, in, your, in, your base, in your base address. So that means you will go on the bridge between Ethereum and base. Um, and this is this website. Here you're going to select how much Ether you're going to transfer, for example, uh, one Ether. So you connect the wallet, it's going to connect to MetaMask. Um, and so it's going to send some money from your Ethereum account to your base account. Um, and after, once you have enough money on your base account, then you can, you can do the transaction. So uh, you will go in Remix. Uh, so first of all, here you will select uh, you will add the network uh let me see uh, the base base main net here you can see it you, you, you click on add okay uh you then once it's added you're gonna uh transition to base main net you select the proper address you go to remix um and here you make sure it's injected provider click on deploy and this time it's going to do the deployment on main net so exactly the same thing except that you, you spend some real money. Uh, <coughs> okay, so now we are going to do the Q&A, but first a uh, brief reminder. So we have the 3DT bootcamp that is, uh, the enrollment is closing in less than 24 hours. So if you want to become a professional blockchain developer, uh, register for the bootcamp. FYI, the price is going to increase at each new cohort. So I recommend if you uh, if you can afford the bootcamp now, it's better to take it now because it's going to be more expensive later. So what we saw in 
this live stream. This is quite basic. If you want to be a professional 3DT developer, there are still many things to learn. Um, like for example, yield, gas optimization, security, etc. So we are going to cover everything that you need to know in this bootcamp. All right, guys. So now let's see what we have in the Q and A. Um, all right. Um, THX. Uh, hey, Julian. New stream schedule. Um, I I don't know yet. I'll try. Uh, what is sure is that. I've been very absent from the channel the past few months because I was really busy uh, preparing the bootcamp. But now that bootcamp is a little bit more structured, uh, I have more time to be on uh, YouTube again. So I definitely spend more time. And uh, yeah, if I can, I'll maintain this schedule. And, and even why not doing doing it from Monday to, to Friday, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> there will be more. All I can say for now is that there will be more video uh, from me from now on. That's for sure. Uh, all right, well, what we have here? Ragu, is gas fee same as ES20 or less than base? So on base, the gas fee will be less. Yeah, that's the whole point. Um, I die here. I have a question, how to burn the liquidity? Can you show it to, to me? Um, so liquidity is is once you have your, your token that is deployed and you uh, basically, you have distributed the token to the different people. Um, what what you can do is um, um, burn what we call the the LP token. Um, so so if what you can okay okay no, no, let me let me rewind this before uh, before you distribute the token, what you can do is you provide all the liquidity to an exchange, then you get the LP token. So when I say you, I mean you as a developer. You get all the LP token, and then you're gonna burn all these LP tokens. So you're gonna send them to some address that that nobody controls. And after people can just buy the token from the decentralized exchange, um, and that's it. So this is what we call burning liquidity. Um, all right, uh, what else we have? Uh, Zex call. Hey, the blocks. Thank you for this information. You're always super helpful. Uh, Thanks, man. Uh, Devanchu, long time no see. Uh, cool. Uh, <coughs> Guts Replica, how do you incorporate a native token to ne negate gas fee? Uh, I don't know what you mean. There is no way to, to make it free. People will always have to, to pay for, for gas fee unless you, you build your own blockchain. Um, all right, uh, Constantin, is it possible to set the automatic lock liquidity pool in the code? Uh, let me see. Uh, can you do that? You could. Let me see. How would you do that? So you could create a function that, when it's executed, uh, send the liquidity to to me, to Uniswap, for example, and then when you receive the token back, it it burns the token. Uh, yeah, you could do it, but. The thing is, you would still need a human to trigger this transaction. So I'm not sure there is a lot of benefit of doing this versus just doing it manually. But yeah, in theory, you can do it. Um, all right. Uh, Zex called. Uh, that would be something cool to add to my CV, that bootcamp. Um, yeah, that's the point is that to make you job ready was this bootcamp. Uh, all right, um, the files, can you make adjustable fee in a contract to prevent snipers on token launch? Um, so let me see, uh, You what you can do is you can prevent wells. So for it, you cannot, for example, you can say, okay, the maximum transfer is something like uh, let me see. How how would you prevent whales? Um, you could refuse. You could block a transfer if the recipient has uh, already a certain amount. So let's say the recipient has like ten percent of the supply, then this recipient cannot receive money anymore. So it's not exactly what you're saying, but uh, <coughs> um, but <clears throat> to prevent sniper. <clears throat> 
so what I what I just said would help because a sniper wouldn't be able to snipe too much uh, too much of the token. But there are other things that you you could do. But I, I don't have this all I can think of uh, for now. Um, Constantin, that's it's better to send liquidity to locked LP manually. Uh, this is how I would do it. Uh, I wouldn't bother to create a function for that. All right, guys. Uh, so there is no more question. Uh, we are going to stop here. So yeah, reminder. Uh, if you wanna get your career, uh, if you wanna get started for your career of 3 dt dev, check out the bootcamp. You have 24 hours to uh, register. Um, all right, guys. So thank you very much, and I will see you next week. Have a good day. Bye, everybody.